a snake that almost everyone has heard about, but very few ever get to see. Despite being one of the most venomous snakes in the US, the eastern coral snake is incredibly elusive, spending most of its time underground. Imagine it, a snake that boasts brilliant colors, whose bite would mean almost certain death, and they're only ever stumbled across by pure chance. I mean, come on, what could go wrong? Hey guys, I'm Zachary Gray, and on this adventure, we'll be searching for America's most venomous snake. It's gonna be a tough hunt, but with a crew of Ben, Spencer, and Cole, we definitely had the experience to get it done. These animals have actually been extirpated from a lot of their historic range, including my home state of Louisiana, and they're near impossible to see in the Carolinas by Ben and Spencer for a lot of the same reasons. So we're heading down to the Florida Scrublands, probably one of the very few places we have a fighting chance at one. This place is an absolute treasure trove for incredible wildlife, and along the way, we'd see stacks of other things that often share the same habitat as the coral snake. Good call on the, he must be bedded down in this gopher apple somewhere. I mean, I was thinking this thick stuff over here. He's big. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Go for it. Go for wow, him, Ben. Wait, where's his head? Right there. Oh, I see him. Wait, he's kind of black on the head, too. Yeah, there you go. Oh my gosh. He's huge, dude. He's so beautiful. Wow, that's oh. a really great one. Yeah, he's, he's actually fancy. You're kidding me. I'm sorry, I know you're angry. <laughs> Jeez, this is way bigger than the first one I saw. Hey. Dude, that is so sick. Well, here we go, guys. This is a really nice eastern coach whip. Quick little buggers, I tell you what. This guy was just hunkered down in a big pile of grass, which is really lucky for us. But what a stunning snake. Now, in this part of Florida, you're gonna get that heavily tan coloration, but he's still got a black head. The coastal coach whips around here are full tan. And as you head further out west, your coach whips tend to be a half black, half red, before becoming full red. So coach whips have a lot of variability, but really in the Eastern United States, we just have the Eastern coach whip. And then there's a nice little stack of coach whip species out west. Now with that, you can kind of see that the habitat of these snakes is always kind of desert-like, whether it's longleaf pine savanna, the deserts out west, or the scrub here in Florida. They're always gonna be kind of in this more sandy environment, covering lots of ground, and they're gonna be very aggressive predators, hunting down really fast lizards, hunting down small birds, and heck, a coach whip of this size might even have a go at a baby gopher tortoise. They're very aggressive. This is a very aggressive feeder, but as you can see, very placid when being held. These are, I believe, the second longest snake in North America, actually, only being beaten out by the eastern indigo, which also tends to live in these scrub habitats. So that would be one of the very rare reptile predators of the coach whip. Now, coach whips are dime a dozen here in Florida. You're gonna get a ton of coach whips across these scrubs, across these coasts, but across their range, it's very interesting because in my home state of Louisiana, there's portions of habitat where they're incredibly rare and there's others where they're super common. Down in South Mississippi, practically an endangered species. Pretty similar in South Alabama. And then as you get into the Carolinas, it's a similar story, but not because the snakes are low in numbers, but more because their habitat is a very small region. So once you get into the right habitat for coach whips, they become dime a dozen every day of the week. But the important thing for coach whip conservation is just having the habitat for them. If they have the habitat, they're going off. Wow, well that is an exceptional snake. Really special find for the day. We're gonna go ahead and put this guy back, keep looking for more, but that's awesome. Eastern coach whip. Much like coral snakes, these coach whips really love these sandy ridges. But unlike coral snakes, coach whips like to spend a lot of time above ground, hunting for lizards, other snakes, and just about anything that they can fit in their mouths. It means we're in the right habitat for sure, but with this recent weather, I'm betting that these snakes are still gonna be underground. It's a new day, and it seems the reptiles are on the move. Get him! Get him! He's gonna get away! What is it? Get him! Oh. Get him! Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can catch him. Hi, everyone. This is Benzino the Water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today we're doing, entering the bite zone with the black racer snake. Oh, he still has some pattern on him. He's beautiful, actually. This is a discount coach whip. It's like a bargain bin coach whip, but this individual's cool. Oh my gosh, relax. Because you can still see the juvie patterning. He might have just lost it on that last head. Coral snakes rarely make an appearance above ground. And when they do, it's usually after a really heavy rain. But what they will do is burrow right under debris, which includes trash. While it's unfortunate that there's so much litter in this area, it actually makes a pretty usable cover for coral snakes. You're joking. It's a joke. Oh, he's right there. Can't you see him? <sighs> he's invisible. They'll take advantage of the higher humidity and any prey items that also might be hiding here. So, I got to flipping. 
being very careful to watch for rattlesnakes, wasps, and any other hazardous wildlife. And then, it happened. Ooh, it's a good board here. Oh, coral! coral. Yeah! Nice! He's skinny, but it's a coral. Let's go! Yep. Oh, freaking Where you're I think so. I think I got that on camera. Very skinny. <laughs> Here we go, guys. This is the snake that we were after out on any scrublands. This is an eastern coral snake. Now, this is one of the most venomous snakes in North America. Really potent neurotoxic venom. They're one of my favorite looking snakes, and they're a very special animal out here on these scrublands. This is one of the areas that they can be more commonly found, but for the most part, people aren't gonna be seeing them. And the reason for that is they're spending a lot of their time underground. They're a very fossorial species, and what they're mostly hunting for underground is other snakes. They'd be hunting after small king snakes, crown snakes, little Florida brown snakes. They are a reptile specialist. You're really not gonna see coral snakes eating things like mice and rodents like other snakes do. And this is the reason that they have such a strong neurotoxic venom. You see, eastern coral snakes are in a lapid. Unlike all of the other venomous snakes in North America, these guys are not vipers. This is an elapid. And elapids typically are gonna have neurotoxic venom. If you're hunting after something like a mammal, it's better to have hemotoxic or even cytotoxic venom. If you're hunting a cold-blooded prey item, you wanna stop their movement as fast as you can. Now, eastern coral snakes are the coral snake that most people are familiar with here in North America. This is your classic coral snake, and this is a pretty big one. They don't get much bigger than this. Now, eastern coral snakes actually have a very small distribution. They end kind of about where I am, into Louisiana and Mississippi, but they used to be very common throughout their range all the way up to the Mississippi River. And the reason that they're not so common anymore is gonna be habitat destruction. We destroy habitat that these guys are in all day long without even seeing them simply because they're so fossorial. They simply get compacted into the dirt by machinery and buried alive. Now I'm pretty close to this snake. Coral snakes are a non-aggressive species, but like I said, this is one of the most potent venoms that you can possibly come across in any snake in the United States. So for that reason, you're gonna see me handling them with the stick. Not because the snake is mean or aggressive or is gonna likely bite. In fact, a coral snake of this size, this attitude, there's a really good chance that if I put my hands on this snake, if I handled him just like any other snake, he wouldn't bite. Coral snakes are not aggressive and their venom is not made for self-defense. Their venom is mostly for their prey. Now, you might have heard of the old rhyme, red on black, venom lack, or one of the dozens of variations of that rhyme. And in this part of Florida, it's generally true. Coral snakes will have red, black, and yellow bands, with red bands touching the yellow ones. And likewise, scarlet snakes and scarlet king snakes will have red, black, and yellow or white bands, with the red bands touching the black bands. However, one thing that you have to remember is that unless you live in the southeastern United States, this rhyme does not work at all. So it's not a good key to identify a snake. You want to hear my rule? If you see a brightly colored snake and you can't identify it, you leave it alone. Now this guy is really, really skinny. He's really emaciated. And I'm not sure why that is. Maybe he's just not getting good food in a while. Maybe he got a little bit sick. I'm not 100% sure. But he's a very long coral snake. And I'd have to guess that he's pretty old. Looking at all the damage that he's taken, he's got some scabs on him. He's got a little nub tail down there. So I'd imagine that this snake is pretty old and has lived in this scrub habitat for quite some time. Now compared to the Texas coral snake, they look pretty similar. Kind of those dark reds, dark yellows. Now he's in shed, so he's not gonna be showing us those bright colors. There's an additional benefit to having this banded red coloration. It's a really good nocturnal camouflage. Red is very difficult for lots of other species to see at night. And with those bands, all of those colors and the shape of the snake blurs together whenever they're on the crawl but we're really not sure. And that's one of my favorite things about the Eastern Coral is we just don't know a lot about this snake. It's really hard to survey for these animals. Since they're so small and so cryptic, they're very hard to study. Finding a coral snake on purpose is no easy task. And it's clear that these snakes want nothing to do with people. And they're by no means dangerous or aggressive when left alone. The only time people are ever bitten by these snakes is whenever somebody foolishly tries to pick them up. So if you're ever lucky enough to encounter one of these animals, don't play with it and don't try to kill it. They're a beautiful addition to the local wildlife and one of the most elusive snakes that calls these scrublins home. Thank you for watching.